y'all know I'm back on my morning mental. I bid each and every one of you grand rising to all of you who are newcomers to this site, to all of you all who are first timers. This is what we do. It's called the morning mental. This is where I talk a little bit about what Yahweh has put on my mind this morning. And for all of the members who are faithful to the morning mental, I bid you a grand rise and I give the most praise to the most high. For those of you all who are new, we're talking about Yahudawa in Hebrew. That is the name of the true God. And we give praise to him. I'm on my morning mental this morning, y'all, because I told y'all the last time I did a morning mental that the next time you see me, that we would demonstrate the power of Yahweh. I told y'all the last time you saw me that the 400 years was up. I told y'all, and I've been telling you for months, for those of you all who are just getting up on this, this is not new. You just found out about it. It's been coming for a while. So I'm on my morning mental this morning. And don't forget, this is going to be brought to you with heavy IG interruptions. This is the most interrupted stream on social media. I bid you all grand rising. I should begin by saying that I give all honor, all praise to all of my members of the NFAC. Those of you all who are brave enough to stand the post. Those of you all who turned out to be, you weren't keyboard cowards. You weren't telephone thugs. You weren't social media gangsters. You real G's. And all of you all who came out in the age though I walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I came here this morning to salute in fact, but I really came here this morning on my morning mental is to set the record straight. Yes, set the record straight. That's going to be our topic this morning. Set the record straight on a morning mental. I'm glad to be back in the house with you. I know a lot of you all have missed me. You were wondering if I was going to come back. And I told you that I had some business to take care of. And now that the business has been handled, the message has been delivered. We are back in the morning mental. I want you all to understand if you are in this room, this chat right now, that we have some rules up in here. Grand rising to you all. The rules are very simple. So you don't get your, get your feelings hurt. Here, we don't give a damn about your feelings. We don't, we don't work like that. What we do is we deal in facts. So this is a pro-black channel. This is a pro-black page. If you are anything other than that, you're going to get your feelings hurt this morning. It's not on purpose. It's just you got your nose in something you got nothing to do with. So instead of you leaving like you should, you always want to stick your nose in our business. Hang around here and your feelings are going to be jacked up before it's over. We, we represent we are the tip of the steer of the most high. 400 years is up. A lot of y'all thought that's just stuff that was written. It's not. It's prophecy. Say what you want. Doesn't change the truth. Now, I'm going to set the record straight on the morning mental. You know, it says that Yahweh said that I will give you Signs and wonders in the skies to mark the times. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit and men and women and children begin to have visions and dreams and they'll begin the prophecy. So they told you to watch the sky. Mm, watch the sky. 
And a lot of y'all don't even know what that means anymore because they spray the sky so you can't see them. So that's another story for another time. If you're on the morning mental, good morning. Again, I see a lot of you coming in. I have to stop and give a big shout out to the Black Self-Defense Coalition. Peace and honor to you for holding down the West Coast NFAC Black Guns March. See, a lot of y'all didn't even know that there were two marches. It wasn't just one. It wasn't a march. It was a formation. And that also went down. It's amazing you don't hear anything about that one. You see like a few pictures, but there's no uproar about that one because they didn't confront racism to its face. They just represented it. So I have to salute uh, my friends over at the Black Self-Defense Coalition. I'm on my morning mental this morning. I bid you a grand rising to all of you all around the world. I'm going to start off by setting the record straight on a few things. We got some problems. We got some things we need to handle in the house. So let's get down to it. First, when I talk about setting things straight, let us define what straight means. Straight means in a straight line, in an orderly fashion, in a progressive line. Things are aligned. Once things are aligned, then we can go to whatever it is that we need to do. So just so you all don't think that what you witnessed this weekend was some fluke that came out of nowhere. And for the rest of you all who are just trying to figure out what the hell happened, the 12 tribes of Israel stood up as they were supposed to. And you all saw just a piece of what's truly a surprise to our enemies. You see, you got to set the record straight. You have to understand that if you have the power of the creator behind you, then it's going to show. And it's going to show even more. So... For those of y'all who think that what happened this weekend was, well, you know, just haphazard. Let me help you out. On July 4th, there was an alignment. You know, I told you our formation is about being straight, being aligned. Well, there was a, another formation that lets you know that we were acting under the will of the Most High. The sun the moon and the earth were in perfect alignment when we did our formation. It caused an eclipse that you didn't see on the side of the planet if you're in America, but it created a shadow called the penumbra on the moon. But if you still don't think that was an alignment, then check this out. At the same time that we were doing the formation and the earth and the sun and the moon were in alignment, Every planet in the solar system was in a straight line. So even the solar system got into formation with us. You see, when you have abused, depressed, misrepresented, lied on, victimized, and then turn around and played victim on God's chosen people, did you really think that you would get away with it forever, you know you wouldn't get away with it. That's why you got a guilt complex. You knew you wasn't going to get away with it. That's why you got an inferiority complex. You knew you wasn't going to get away with it. You knew sooner or later they was going to figure out. You knew sooner or later they was going to come to tap that ass. So let me, let me let you understand that this alignment was everywhere. So I had to come today because we have everything in alignment. But I see we got to get some stuff straight because you're being lied to. You're being lied to by the media. You're being lied to by white supremacist organizations on YouTube. You're being lied to because, see, when you're scared and you know you're wrong, this is how, this is how you act. Pardon my language to all my, my children of the most high, but you act like a little bitch. That's what you do. So I'm not surprised. But here's the problem, y'all. And I want to ask a question to everybody who's tuned in on the morning mental. Why is it that every time black folks try to have something for themselves, to protect themselves, to enrich themselves, to educate 
themselves, to lift up themselves, to raise the racial esteem to as high as the personal esteem. Why is it that every time we attempt to do that, y'all want to act like we're attacking y'all? I'm on my morning mental right now. You see, nobody defends the black race. Nobody steps up for the black race. When someone does something to someone of another nationality, there's a country that steps up for them. And they always look out for their people. When somebody does something to one of us, nobody steps up on our behalf. So we had to step up ourselves. And what I need y'all to understand is that if you if you stick your head in the sand on this one, you're going to get left behind. Now, I'm going to talk to the white folks real quick because I know they're up on here. Look at here, y'all. You threatened us. You issued a threat against us. You asked for it. Don't play bitch now when what you ask for shows up. My mother always told me, you keep knocking on the devil's door and sooner or later somebody going to answer. Now, I'm watching and we setting the record straight this morning. You all are acting like you got attacked. Oh, y'all acting like we came for y'all. Oh, y'all acting like we just showed up. To start some, you threatened us. And I told you, we don't threaten and we don't scare. So we don't care to hear your threats. But since you made that threat, well, we pulled up so you could make good on your threat. And don't y'all understand that every time you make a threat against us after everything you've done to us, that's like being in an abusive relationship and you already beat the, beat the, beat the person down and now you threatening to beat them again and you keep threatening to beat them again and then you wonder why they boiled some hot ass water and threw it on your ass. I'm on my morning mental this morning. He's setting the record straight. I seen the stories in the media. Oh, the media said that we came out and we, we out, we out to kill white people. We, no, let me set the record straight. For every action, there's an equally strong reaction. What we said, and I'm going to say it again, is what you keep doing to us, we're going to start doing to you. That's self-defense. We're not out to attack you, but apparently you can't stop attacking us. Apparently you can't stop shooting us for no reason. Apparently you can't stop lynching us. Apparently you can't stop raping us. Apparently... It appears that you're the one that has a problem with attacking people worldwide. And you've even talked other races into doing it, too. So don't play the victim of circumstances you created. Now, all of a sudden, it's a problem. When white folks is picking up guns and playing G.I. Joe and running around talking about, you know, they got it right and we will not erase you and all of this. Oh, it's OK. Because it's you. When 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 the police got their knee in somebody's neck or shoot somebody in the back and after they've just done one or two things, oh, it's not an issue. We need to calm down. But but when one of your people goes on a mass shooting, kill a bunch of kids, shoot people down in the library, throwing bombs and shit, you take them into custody and they need some psychiatric help. Oh, I'm on my morning mental. We setting the record straight. So to all you organizations out there who don't understand what's happening, let me help you out real quick. White folks, we're not thinking about you. We're thinking what we're going to do if you keep attacking us. Don't try to play victim. Second, we're not anti-Semitic or any of that bullshit. So stop trying to throw us in. Stop trying to pin us into one of your existing groups. I told you, we're like something you've never seen before. So stop trying to let me let me explain something to y'all on the morning mental. Let me get him out of my mode for a minute. Let me let me educate y'all real quick. There is a medical study that you can go look up yourself where they found out there are two types of people in this world. 
There is a gene that you have in your DNA that if something happens, you're going to do one of two things. You're either A, going to run toward the situation, or B, you're going to freeze. Here's why. And I'll tell you why I'm telling you this. The first thing is, let's say you see something that you've never seen before. If you have the first gene, you you try to identify what it is. You Your brain cannot process what it's seeing. So it's going through all of its files of everything in your memory. It's trying to identify. It's trying to, what is it? So you get stuck in this loop and you find yourself saying, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? What the hell? When your mind just can't find anything in its file that looks like it. So it goes into a spin. But the other gene is the gene where when you see something, your mind doesn't try to identify it. It responds to it. You know those people that when they see a car accident, they immediately got to stop and jump out and, and, and run across there and be a hero and pull the people out? You see, if you have the first gene, you're going to freeze. If you have the second gene, you're going to charge into the situation. <sighs> A lot of y'all don't seem to understand that what white America, white society, and the white global elites are doing right now is their mind is spinning because they're trying to attach us to something. Well, what, well, maybe they're the black Hebrew Israelites. No. Well, maybe they're the black Panthers. No. Well, maybe they're the, well, maybe they're BLM. No. Well, well maybe they're, your mind is caught. Because, see, you ain't never seen this before. So you're trying to identify. We're trying to stick us with something. Stop sticking us. We're not a part of none of that. I'm going to set the record straight this morning. We're none of them. They are them. They are them. I am that I am. Start a new file. We don't belong in the old file. So that means you're going to have to learn a new adversary. We're here to protect our people. We're here to protect our children. We're here to protect our women. We're here to protect our community. We're here to protect our culture. We're not saying that you can't have yours, even though most of your shit is built off of ours. What we're saying to you is you don't want to respect us as a people. Then we're going to make you respect us. Y'all remember the movie Hall of Nights? Y'all remember the scene when Eddie Murphy was out back fighting Della Reese? Y'all remember what she said? Oh, now you're going to shoot me in my pinky toe. You going to respect me or every time I see you, I'm going to whip your ass. Y'all remember that scene? That's what they've done to black people. And it's funny because there's some white people that really don't realize what the hell has happened. There are some black people who are so comfortable in their captivity that they don't believe what's happening is happening. I know a lot of people who have family members right now who are telling, no, don't do that. No, you ain't got nothing to do with that. That's not your problem. No, let's just stay here. See, you've been brainwashed into individualism. Individualism is when you only give a shit about yourself. You don't give a shit about your neighborhood. You don't give a shit about your city. You don't give a shit about your nation. You don't give a shit about your people. You just give a shit about yourself. I'm on my morning mental. Let y'all know something. Here to get the record straight this morning. The planets are in alignment. The earth and the moon and the stars is in alignment. And we were in formation, in alignment. So everybody was in alignment with who? The most high, y'all, most high. To deliver that message. Now. It's Monday morning. And we back on the morning mental. I promised I'd be back. But I want y'all to understand what happened. <laughs> y'all lying because you're wrong. Y'all stop believing all this stuff out on the Internet. They're lying because they know they're scared and they're wrong. White people. And I'm going to have to go there. I'm sorry. I can't blame nobody else. White people are the only creatures on earth that will go to someone else's home, invade their place, utilize their resources, steal all of their riches, kill the people, rape the women, try to erase the culture, then inject their DNA, and then make rules for everyone else to live by with their superior. How long did you think that was going to last? 
And then they have what we call selective hearing. You know, it's interesting because most of y'all don't understand that what I'm telling you is they acting like we want Texas. Texas, relax. When I says we'll take Texas, I'm being sarcastic, you stupid fucker. I told you it's a choice. Y'all either carve out a space for us to grow or you don't get in our way when we leave this place. Then y'all tell us to get the fuck out of here. See, we really trying to leave. We don't want to stay here with you Edomites anymore. It's like an infection that's gotten too deep. Yes, we do want to leave. Now that you understand that, stop talking about we about to attack Texas. We're not attacking anybody. That's what you do. You see, everything that they're trying to project on us is what they do. And we're not built from the same cloth. We don't have the same the same DNA. We don't go around doing what you do. Stop calling me a racist because you're embarrassing yourself. You don't know the meaning of the word racist. Why don't you learn to read and go look up what the word is? Oh, you can't read. You're functionally illiterate. Well, let me help you out. A racist is someone who has sole control over the final disposition of a people. That means you control everything they do, even whether they live or die. Now you tell me within the last 400 years when the black man has had that authority over anybody, over the white man, over the Arab, over the China man, over no one. So it's impossible for us to be racist. We can be pissed off though about the racist treatment that you've done to us. I've seen somebody try to get smart and come on here and try to tell me that well, y'all talking about y'all were slaves but the origin of the word slave is from Slavic. Oh, because yes, we do know that the first slaves were some white folks but then you enslaved us. See, being being a slave is not a noun. Being a slave is an act of violence. So you committed slaving on us. You enslaved us. It's not that slavery got violent. It is violence. So you committed 400 years of violence against us. 247 years of that violence was committed right here on this territory. A lot of us blood is so mixed up and mucked up right now. We don't even know what side we stand on. You did that. We didn't do that. You stole all the gold. We didn't do that. You took all the land. We didn't do that. You committed genocide against the Native Americans. We didn't do that. You're the ones that try to rewrite our history to fit yours. We didn't do that. You're the ones that rewrote our, our, our history and then call it some fake religion and call it the slave man. Then you went around the world and try to force everybody to believe in it and change Yeshua to Jesus. You did that. Don't make me sit here and call the role of all the things you did and now that you're doing right now. So playing the victim and putting out all of this false information because you don't want them to think that the black folks finally got together to protect themselves. That black folks did nothing illegal. The ignorance, the ignorance and the nerve of you people. And let me explain something to you. I'm going to say it here live. And I'm glad I got my man uh, Ozone Dread up on here because what I'm going to say is y'all need to remember Haiti. I'm talking to black folks now. Y'all need to go study Haiti. You see, same thing. Black folks got sick of it. But before they went up against the white man. They killed every black person that was still loyal to the white man. And then they went to war with the white man and they won. White man didn't like that because they was prospering for a minute. But as they always do, they could simply send somebody in who looked like us. Who was there to destroy that country, bankrupt them. Because they were on their way to being prosperous. You understand what I'm saying? And now they broke in that country. Destroyed it. And then, of course, they had the, the, the earthquake. Every Everybody else has been rebuilt. But, see, the white man got a problem when you stand up for yourself. The white man, it's a threat when we do it. Oh, did nobody give a damn about the white boys with the guns? But the moment that we get organized, no, we're not a mob. We're a militia. The minute we do it, oh, everybody's talking. It broke the internet. Because the black people that you know that you've been profiting off of, the black people whose money you take to build up your own community, the black people that you give substandard education, that you give substandard medical care, that you give substandard policing, that you give substandard housing, that you give substandard judicial process, that you give substandard everything. It's got tired of your bullshit. And I've seen a lot. Of, oh, they got this weapon and that weapon. It's a start. We got to start somewhere. But notice, they're not saying nothing when they started it. You see, we didn't start this. You did. 
You threatened us. You threatened our families. You threatened our children. You said you was going to do it on July 4th. And see, we don't just see with these two eyes. We see with this eye too. See, our pineal gland is fully functional. So we don't fall for all of the smoke and mirrors that you do. You come in many forms. You came as the police, but we see you. You came as doctors, but we see you. You sometimes come as our, our pastors, and sometimes you come as our teachers, and sometimes you come as the grocery store, sometimes you come as our lawyer, and, but we see past all of that. You see, white people, you need to talk to your own people because a lot of them are still KKK. And I'm going to say it this morning again, okay? Now, you have to remember the history of the KKK. KKK was not invented for us. It was originally invented for Catholic Irish. But then eventually they came after us. So therefore, we see through the smoke screen to know that there is a faction amongst you who wants things to go as if they did win the Civil War. You see, when you're three point six billion dollars worth of property, that's now worth four hundred and thirty seven billion dollars walking around and you can't use it. It's like having a bank account that you don't have the ATM card to no more. It's like having a safe that you can't remember the combination to no more. It's like having one more wish but you don't remember how you're supposed to rub the magic lantern. That's what you are, black folks. You are walking gold. You are walking gold to them, and they cannot get in the safe anymore. So now in the safe, it wants to defend itself. We never said that we were going to attack any goddamn body. We called out the people who threatened us. And as usual, pussy, and I'm saying it here on the air, you threaten us again. You damn well better show up. Because we're not level one, level two, level three, or level four. We're the final result. Oh, y'all don't know the levels. Here we go again. Level one, y'all do some fucked up shit. We upset. But we just upset. Level two, we go out in the streets and start turning over shit and throwing rocks and shit. You know, that's... Level three, the protesters come out. You know, this, this bring a sign to a gunfight, motherfuckers, because they just upset. They want to, they want to let you know. Okay, uh, you know that level, level, level four is the looters. They gonna come out because it's really not even about the issues that they tired of not having nothing. Because y'all made it so hard to have shit. Plus, you put everybody on quarantine. Everybody went broke. So yeah, they want to get some shit. But what you didn't think about is you're so used to putting out the fire at level four. Oh, we got them under control. We got the Negroes under control. They out here bowing down with us. They letting us ride around and say their slogans. We got them under control. Everybody be cool. We done messed around and told them, yo, that it's not all of us. It's just a few. Okay, we got them under control. And y'all silly motherfuckers out there doing it. We under control. I'm on my morning mental. And you thought you had them under control. And then level five showed up. Level five is the core of the black community for real. And we're not an unruly mob, as you can see. And there are many of us. It ain't all of us, because a lot of us are, I hate to say it, we got black people and we got N-words. We got black people and we got N-words. And the N-words know who they are. I'll tell you who the N-words are. You can spot them. Those are the ones who are against what they saw. Those are the ones who are saying, you know, they hating. And they're hating for several reasons. A lot of it is because, well, all of it is because they scared. They scared. A lot of people got scared. They really got scared. Because they saw their life flash in front of their face. And they realized that for all the talk that they do, they're really not ready to walk through the fire. They're really not ready to go to Sheol. They're not ready. They act like they're ready. So this weekend in Stone Mountain, Georgia, we went to the fire. Oh, we went, we went all the way into the fire because if you ready to die for it, then you really mean what you say. And the rest of y'all who was asleep, that's now awake, you welcome to the party. We've been here for a minute. All you got to do is scan this profile. We're not new and our damn show ain't new. But we're here to set the record straight this morning. And at the end of the day, the, the NFAC, I salute you. And to everyone else that came out, I salute you. And for all of the people 
around the world that are now saying that we understand the blueprint now because that's what we wanted to give you, a blueprint. Protesting is not waving signs and singing slogans. Protesting is making sure that your point of view is felt, that you're not dealing with something anymore. And the reason that you can't stop the problems that's confronting you, black people, is because you keep talking to it, but it keeps putting its hands on you. So this morning is a good morning to feel black. I want y'all to know that. Because while they was out celebrating their independence while we were slaves, you know, there was nothing um, that was that was beneficial. We celebrated our independence. And yes, there's nothing you can do to stop the process at this point that we're either going to leave this place or we're going to get our own. You see, you we don't have to make up nothing. You owe us. No, 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 no. Don't get don't 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 be like that. There are treaties that have not been honored since the Civil War ended. How about we honor them? There are treaties with with some of the uh, Native American nations involving slavery. How about you honor them? You give repatriation to everybody else. I'm going to advise you to use the same formula for us. You see, we don't want land as repatriation. We want our own country and we want our repatriations. So at the end of the day, we know you're not going to do any of that. We know that for a fact. That's the part where y'all got it, got us part of my language, people. Here we go. It's going to get rough. Y'all got us fucked up. We know you're not because you've never given anything back to anyone. You've stolen people's stuff and stuck it on display. You're clowns in that respect. So we know you're not going to willingly give us anything. And Malcolm X said it best. There can be no revolution without some bloodshed. And a lot of y'all thought we could sing and march our way to equality. Now y'all got so many people who's deluded and hijacked our movement that a lot of y'all act like the black movement went away. You see, the black movement was never about encompassing everybody else. And white people, I'm going to say it to you one last time this morning. Stop talking to me about a person that you killed, Martin Luther King, who came out when he was oblivious and said he had a dream. And then five years later said it was a nightmare. Y'all never talk about that, that the man said we were integrating into a burning house because you killed him after that, because he came to his goddamn senses. So stop acting like and stop believing in this kumbaya. See, here's the here's the problem with kumbaya. Your kumbaya is just people getting along. Your kumbaya is not, well, let us divide this money up evenly. Your kumbaya is not, well, let us divide this land up evenly. Your kumbaya is not, let you have an equal say so at the political table. Your kumbaya is not, let's sit down and rewrite all the laws so they're beneficial to everybody. Your kumbaya is not, let's modify the 13th Amendment to the Constitution and take out the part that says, let he, let's he be a criminal. Let's just say, let no man be a slave. Why you got to have a loophole there and then lock up all the bros because you missing your money. That's what this is about. And now all of a sudden, you know that the sands are shifting under you. You know this to be a fact. You know that in fact rings the death knell for your unchecked violence against black people. And now you have to reap what you have sown. So don't try to process us through the same channels that you process anyone else. You can reach out to everybody else when you want to open negotiations. It would be, it would behoove you to open negotiations with us rather than attempt to label us as something you've seen before. Because as you can tell, we don't show our hand until we have to. So you have no idea what we are. You have no idea how big we are. You have no idea. I heard someone say last night, there's no way you can have that many black people in an organization and we don't know about it then why in the fuck didn't you know about what was happening at Stone Mountain? Why didn't you know about what was happening in Phoenix? Why didn't you peep out the weapons, the uniforms, the organization? Those of you all who served in the military know exactly what you were looking at. And only some idiot who was too cowardly to serve is making, making statements because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I want to take this time to salute 
people in different countries that are on board as well. All my folks over in the UK, the Marcus Garvey movement. Yeah, I'm shouting y'all boys out again. I heard you and I know you do what we talked about. I want to shout out Mike Lowry in Jamaica and all his people down there. You know what we talked about. You do what you do. I want to address all my people down in Colombia. You know what we said. You know what you got to do. Oh, y'all thought this was just a problem in the U.S. with some ex-slaves. This is bigger than that. You see, your presence is felt everywhere on the planet. White man. And you've even got some people helping you out. China man. Even got some people that was down with us at first that have turned around acting like they're you now. Arab man. So it's a global problem. So we're a global family. And someone said, well, why the name NFAC? Because you get to the point where you're not fucking around with people no more. You're not entertaining the silliness no more. You're tired of talking, tired of the lies, tired of being told, wait, 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 wait. You get tired and we are tired. Now, I'm speaking to every world leader. I have people in your country. I have people in your communities that are concerned. They're not your problem. They're your solution. And the last thing we need is a race war on a global scale. I'm going to let that hang in your mind for a minute. And to all the people who know who I'm talking to. We have done what we said we were going to do. We're going to protect ourselves. We got to start policing our own communities. We have to start looking out for each other. We have to stop treating each other as the enemy. And see the enemy for who it is. To all of the members in the United States. And I'm not going to call it roll because y'all came from everywhere. White people, stop beating up the governor of Georgia. Ain't nothing he could have done about that. We didn't break no laws. White people, stop saying, can't there be something that's done? How can there be something that's done when we weren't breaking the law? Hmm? And most importantly, media, stop misreporting us. We're setting the record straight this morning. We ain't threatened no goddamn body. We responded to a threat. Okay? That's the point blank. Live with that. Next time, tell your people don't make idle threats and then you won't have to see black folks come out like that. Let me say it one more time. Tell your people to stop making idle threats and we won't have to come out like that. And for all of you all who are sitting on here trying to cry all that same bullshit, go back and listen to everything that was said. We said black people killing black people and white people killing black people. So don't come in here with that what about black on black crime bullshit because everybody kills everybody. If you're going to uphold one statistic, you better uphold them all because 87% of all crime is committed by white people. Mm, they don't want to talk about that. So we came to set the record straight this morning. Now, I know a lot of folks are talking real strong on the Internet and I'm watching. I've said what I had to say. I've made my chess move. I told you this is chess, not checkers. I've made a move. Now it's their move. And we have a move for their move. And we have a move for their move for the move that I'm going to make after they make their next move for the next move. What they can't comprehend is that we're not stupid at all. And as for little old me, I'm J. Edgar Hoover's worst nightmare come true. Oh, we're setting the record straight this morning. Let me help you all out. You see, y'all should study J. Edgar Hoover. He was an interesting character. Yes, he was. But back in the 60s, J. Edgar Hoover was asked, what's your worst nightmare? He said his worst nightmare was black unity. That was his worst nightmare was black unity. Hmm. Maybe maybe he knew some things. So he operated in what they call COINTELPRO. I'm on my morning mental. Good morning, y'all. 
Grand rising to all of you all who don't know what that means. But here's the trick. Hmm. He operated a program called Operation Black Messiah. I didn't make this up. He did. Operation Black Messiah, and I quote, to prevent the rise of a black male charismatic figure that could energize the black nationalist movement and unite the black people. That was a program the United States government put into operation in the 60s. And to all, for all we know, it's still in effect. That's why we haven't had any real charismatic, unifying, energizing, articulate, Yahweh spirit filled, race rage filled leaders. What you've got are a bunch of pacifiers. You got a bunch of people who are puppets on a string. You got a bunch of camera clowns. You got folks that want to come through and tell you just, just work along with them. You have not had a Shaka Zulu. You haven't had a Hannibal. You haven't had an Emotep. You haven't had any of those. Because Operation Black Messiah was supposed to prevent that. And then here I come tiptoeing along. Do you think they've dusted off the fire? I think they have because I'm their worst nightmare because I only care about my people. I only love my people. I don't hate y'all. I just love my people. And that's y'all problem because I love them. Doesn't mean I hate you. I, I, I can't tell y'all this more than once. Let me teach. You see, in order to destroy a race's esteem, you have to destroy their knowledge of their culture. You have to destroy the memory of them ever thinking they did anything so they have nothing to be proud of. Why do you think they run around putting up statues? Why do you think they run around flying flags and want to remember their heritage? Why do you think they have these museums with all of this, this is what we did shit? Why do you think they want you to learn his story? Why, why, why? Because they want you to be proud of what they've done. But they don't want you to be proud of what you've done because they figure if you don't think you ever did nothing, then you don't think you're worth anything. Then you won't ever uphold any values. So you have high personal esteem, but you have low race esteem. And they don't brainwashed it in you. They don't, they don't scrub. It's like a, it's in there like grapes on grape juice on your, on your carpet. It just don't come out. And then somebody comes along and they says, well, that's not true. We're teaching you everything there is about the world. Leave your country and travel the world and find out how much you don't know. On the morning mental on which y'all this morning. If you are new to the morning mental, I do this uh, when I wake up and I talk about what Yah has said to me. Normally, this is a private group, but today it's public because I want them to see what they've been missing. This is not new. We've been here now to make the people proud. You have to tell them the truth about who they are to make the people proud. You have to give them credit for things that they've done to make the people proud. You have to treat them as an equal to make the people proud. Somebody has to be willing to stand up for them. To make the people proud, you have to be able to say that anybody that's worth fighting for is worth the trouble. I think I heard that in a song somewhere. <sighs> Can I teach in here a little bit? So now we're back. And what have I seen since then? I will speak now about that. We went to Stone Mountain. Georgia, because it is the birthplace of the Ku Klux Klan, who we feel is behind all of the threats, that's behind all of the racism, that's behind all of the police brutality, that's behind all of the housing discrimination, that's behind all of the gerrymandering in the government, that's behind keeping us mentally enslaved. And when I say the Ku Klux Klan, I don't just mean the ones that wear the robes. I mean, they're family members that, you know, hide out and they wait on you in the store until you have a nice day. 
You know, I'm talking about the ones that stand by and watch the lady's baby die in the ICU instead of her listening. They, she told them my baby is dying because, you know, those are the, the relatives of the KKK. Oh, ain't nobody came out and got in the KKK's ass in a minute. So they thought they could get away with the shit that they've been doing. But now somebody is on that ass. And because of that, now all of a sudden they want to talk about it. We don't want to talk about this shit no more. Y'all thought we forgot. We didn't forget. So you issued a threat against my people. Yes, I know scary Negroes repeated it. It's a shame we can repeat what y'all repeat what they say to us, but y'all don't never go out and say no shit that we say to them. We've been over here on the morning mental. We've been over here on facts over feeling. We've been talking like this. The NFAC ain't new. We showed up in Brunswick. Don't y'all know that? Who the fuck you think showed up in Brunswick? That was the NFAC. Who the fuck you think showed up in Dayton last year when the, when the KKK tried to rally? Who you think you've been seeing us? You just didn't pay us any mind. Now, all of a sudden, it's critical. So we show up in your home. You see, we're not going to go to nobody else's house to start a fight. You threatened us. So we came to make good on your threat. And as usual, you won't come with someone who's prepared. You want to pick on children. You want to pick on defenseless women, pregnant women. Or you want to pick on young boys that's all by themselves. That's some cowardly shit. Yet we're attacking you? No white people. And the truth of the matter is, thank God the only thing we're after is equality and not revenge. If black people were as violent as you think we are, there would be none of you. So, fo, 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 I salute you. The end of the day, stop trying to play victim over some shit you started. Stop playing victim over a debt you owe. Stop playing victims in a crime you committed. Stop playing victim when someone wants to hit back when you keep hitting them. You want all this to go away? Then give us everything that's owed to us, including the respect that we deserve as a race. Give us a national apology signed by your commander in chief for the institution of slavery. Give us our reparations once and for all. And it ain't got nothing to do with anything else on top of whatever else you owe us. Give us what's owed to us or facilitate us leaving this place and you can have this raggedy motherfucker all to yourself but don't come asking us to buy your products don't come copying our music don't ask our people to play in your your athletics see we can do all those things by ourselves. what y'all don't understand and what they do understand i got to teach a little bit this morning on my morning mental is that there's nothing that they've done that wasn't done at the barrel of a gun Every country was started at the barrel of a gun. Every revolution started at the barrel of a gun. Hell, the American Revolution at the barrel of a gun. Okay, the French Revolution at the barrel of a gun. Yet when black folks decide to arm themselves to protect themselves against continued aggression, all of a sudden y'all want to listen because now we're speaking at the barrel of a gun. And for all you white supremacists out there, who just can't get this through your Neanderthal skull. You fucked with the wrong generation. We're the last generation. Because if you're reading the scriptures and you know exactly what's going on and what 2020 actually means and what the signs in the skies are telling you and what the mood of the people on the planet is telling you, it's like an alarm clock. Time's up. You see... <laughs> Y'all ain't really figured it out. Let me help y'all out. You are only 12% of the world population. You're only 12% of the entire world population. The rest of the world is us. So I'm not talking about 45 million people in America going to war with 250 million invading white folks. I'm talking about all 82%. Of the melanated people on this planet dealing with you once and for all. You either take your seat as a peaceful participant at the table of the global society. Or you invite the other thing. And we'll move on. And we'll miss you. But you either play and get along with everybody else. 
or you get the fuck off the playground because now you're a bully and we can't do this no more. So we went to Georgia, see them boys. And as you all can tell, I'm not one of those people who talk just from behind the screen. I have no problem getting out front of my people at all. So talk all the shit you want, but I didn't see you there. Put up all the posts you want, but I ain't see you there. Go ahead and make all the YouTube videos and give me your opinion all you want, but I didn't see you there. As a matter of fact, I can't listen to a lot of y'all right now because I didn't see you there. So if you can't start off with, yo, I was there, I can't hear you. Y'all don't understand how much, how deep that is. You cannot say anything to us because you weren't there. You threatened us and we pulled up. Most importantly, you threatened to kill me. You threatened to kill me, motherfucker. So I pulled up with a squad. Sisters and brothers who are avowed to avenge me should I die. And to all you black people that slept on this, we'll wake up. We all change and we all evolve. And we all turn into something different than what we used to be. So for those people who made the fatal mistake of thinking you know me, you knew me. Because if you know me, you would have met me in Stone Mountain. Or you would have showed up in Phoenix. It's okay to be scared. Just step back and let the boys be boys. And let the sisters be sisters. All of us ain't scared. Some of us ain't never scared. Big shout out to Bone Crusher. To the entertainment industry. We have been here. We know y'all been preoccupied. But now that you're aware. Let's change the narrative. And stop letting them tell us. What we're doing. Big shout out to 50 Cent. I see you boy. Bust the rhymes. Thank you sir. Buckshot. Thank you. Yuck Mouth. Thank you. Chuck Creekmore, allhiphop.com. Thank you. And I want y'all to understand that now that we're at your door, where we go from here, you determine. Because we are proactive. We don't want to be reactive. And we're only here for our own people. So stop telling everybody we out to attack anybody. We ain't attack nobody yet. Stop telling the people we're a terrorist. We haven't committed a terrorist act yet. As a matter of fact, everything that we've done, we did within the confines of the law. We broke no laws. I want to send a big shout out to the boys down there at the Wendy's that asked us to come down and, and give them some pointers and help them police their own neighborhood. You see, when the young black men reach out to the OGs and say, show us how it's done so we can do it. And by the way, while you're here, we're going to handle a few things. That type of unity is what we need to see everywhere. I'm talking to black people. I'm sorry about the rest of y'all. Y'all stick together very well. You know how I know y'all stick together? Because y'all stick together because one of y'all can do something. The rest of y'all act like y'all didn't see it. The rest of y'all act like the person that's the victim broke the law. And then the rest of y'all convict that person and throw them in jail. That's y'all sticking together. So don't get mad when we start sticking together. As a matter of fact, let me give y'all personal testimony. I am going to release this video later. See, y'all thought this was over. But let me share with you what happened to me yesterday. Yesterday, as I was traveling, because I move, I move in different modes, because I know they want to get a boy. Um, I witnessed this on the interstate. As my partners and I were moving down the interstate, we saw a young black man. Standing by his car on the side of the road with his arms folded. He didn't even have a shirt on, head dreads in his head. He looked like the young black brother. And there was this police officer who had stopped in the other lane. He was on the other side. We like, how the hell did he pull him over from the other side? And the young brother had his hands folded and the, the state trooper was doing him like this. 
And we was like, uh, 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 see, this is what y'all got to do. We saw it. We didn't just drive by and kept going talking about, oh, what the fuck you do? We were like, uh, 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 uh. See, white folks are just driving by like, I see the niggas is getting locked up again. Uh, 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 uh. So what did we do? We got off on the next exit, did a U-turn, came back onto the interstate, went right back up there to where that cop was parked. And when he saw us pull up, he going to walk over there and peek out and whatnot. No, we ain't come for all of that. We got out the car. And I walked over and the dude, the cop was like, everything's okay. Everything's okay. I was like, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to this brother. Brother, you all right? And the brother was laughing. He was like, yo, man, I'm good, man. My car just broke down. You know, he was staying here until the tow truck came. I'm like, all right. You should have seen the look on this officer's face like, what the fuck? Because they're not used to us sticking together. You need us to stick out here with you, bro? No, nah, we good, man. I'm good. He kicking to my man. He being extra nice. I don't know why. I'm going to show y'all the video. We're going to release the video. We got it on film. And I looked at the cop like, I right, then. And we got back in the car and we all broke out. That motherfucking cop stood there and was like, what the fuck just happened? That's what y'all got to do. When you see one of us being engaged by these people, don't be afraid to pull up bro, and ask the bro. Don't ask them. Fuck them. Bro, you all right? My bro say he ain't all right. I'm going to need you to back up. Oh, you came back up. Oh, okay then. All right. No problem. I'll be right back. Okay. You ain't got back up. Stay right there. That's what we ran into yesterday. Because we're not just saying it. Y'all, we got to start living it. Now, don't get me wrong. Wrong is wrong. If you're wrong, you're wrong. But see, these days, we can't tell the difference. Because y'all give the same treatment to somebody who's wrong that y'all give to somebody that's not wrong. I told y'all once we got done with the black, forma the black guns formation that the next thing is the recruitment tour. Oh, I'm coming to your city. Oh, you won't know until right before we pull up. But those of us who are involved in the NFAC already know. I said this before, that once we did our little July 4th thing, now we're going to come to the city so we can swear in and sanction the chapters that are already there. I want to give a big shout out to the young man that's, that reached out to me from Louisiana. Y'all seen the kid that walked up with the guns. Yeah, we out here. I love his accent. We out here because y'all was out there harassing those ladies. And we were out, you know, he called. I, well, I talked to him um, then two day, two hours after it happened. But then we went and did what we did. And I want to let, let the brother know. See, that's what I'm talking about. Y'all put yourselves together. Don't be nobody who don't. The young brothers at the Wendy say, yo, man, we don't know about guns like that. We need each other to teach us about firearms. Teach us tactics. Teach us the law. Teach us yada, yada, yada. And I, I respect that. And the NFAC respects that. So if you feel you already have your organization together, we're a coalition. We're a coalition. But we're a coalition that understands leadership. And a lot of folks got egos. Listen. That's cool that you got your group, but you, you are one unit. If you want to join the army, then you have to respect the chain of command because that's your backup. Some of y'all live in places where even having a gun is almost impossible. We had a brother even showed up at the formation with a bow and arrow doing anything he could. But y'all got to understand. No one can come into your neighborhood. No one can come into your neighborhood and police it better than you. And we've given you the example again. I'm on my morning mental. We're setting the record straight because they lying on us this morning. Oh, they lying hard. I ain't seen nothing like this since, 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 since. Damn, I ain't never seen nothing like this. I'm coming to the end of the first half of the morning mental. I'll be back. I hope y'all come back and hang out with us. If this is your first time, this is where we take the break and I'll be back setting the record straight on the morning mental.